Well, hello, my beautiful friends, your boy Seth here, bringing you a look at Paranormal Site, the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Um, I wanted to get right into it here because the game just really sort of thrusts you straight into it. Uh, this is a brand new game from Square Enix uh, that just dropped um, on the Nintendo Switch. And this is an interesting looking game, kind of like a horror detective mystery sort of thing, visual novel vibes. Looks very much up my alley. I was excited to check it out. Um, so we're gonna give it a look here. Uh, just just kind of a little uh, a little taste of what this game actually is. And um, it looks like there's a lot of like kind of like fourth wall breaking and stuff. So I didn't want to get too far into this opening sequence without letting you guys see it first. Um, I will have a link uh, to purchase the game in the video description. It is currently in a launch window discount as well. So if anything you see here today interests you, you can pick up the game for just $15.99 in the uh, in the launch window so really great price again this is a game developed by Square Enix excited to take a look at it um, I will issue a content warning this is like a horror game uh, there's probably going to be some sensitive or disturbing or scary or mature themes or whatever in here so just be totally aware of that before we get started but let's uh, without any further ado let's check this game out Paranorma site and we're introduced literally here at the splash screen. Ah, you're here. Welcome, welcome. I've been eagerly awaiting for your arrival. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the storyteller. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I shall be your guide going forward. Now then, before we begin our story, there are several things I must bring to your attention. First, this game uses autosave. The game will automatically save at regular intervals, so you may stop playing at any time. Saving is a very important element of games, it is the only way to keep your memories in place. If you do not wish to rely on autosave alone, you can also save manually via the menu. Next, please look at the upper right of the screen. This is the menu button. From here, you can check the text log, view useful files, and switch auto mode on and off. You can also adjust the brightness, volume, and other settings in the options menu. For instance, if there is a voice you would prefer not to hear, you can mute it by setting the voice volume to zero. I suggest you check the brightness, controls, and other settings now before going on. Okay. <laughs> it's very funny. So, I mean, just already, you're kind of getting a sense of, you know, what this game is like. The game, this is the opening of the game. Whoa. That's interesting. Okay. Auto button display. I guess so. Probably to auto advance text, I imagine. Um, persons of interest. <laughs> All right. I will explain other essential functions when the time is right. Ah, there's one more thing I wish to confirm before we continue. I would feel strange to go on without knowing your name. Please tell me what I may call you. Okay. I wonder if it'll let me do $2 hero. I think I'll have just enough characters. That, like, 10 character limit. There you go. I see. $2 hero, is it? Hmm. Are you certain you wish to be called $2 hero? Yeah. Oh, how rude of me. Please pardon my mistake. I was sure that's what you said, but it seems I was wrong. What came over me? Let me try again. You wish to be called $2 hero? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I see. Very good. I seem to have gotten it right this time. All right, now that we've been properly introduced, let us begin our story. Oh my gosh, this is very weird. Ahem. From antiquity to present day, regardless of how society and civilization evolve, death has been a constant presence that none have ever escaped. 
says presented by two dollar hero there on the screen whether it is one's own or that of someone close death is always a difficult thing to accept this is an immutable reality a value shared by all no matter the age in which they live in fact oral traditions reflecting people's fears and prayers regarding death still remain ghosts spirits and so on Similarly, in an attempt to defy death, many curses, rituals, and customs have been born, from burning spirit incense to summoning the souls of the dead. Some of those secret arts are still being passed down to this day. Ah, on that note, $2 hero, this may seem rather abrupt, but... Is there someone you wish to bring back from the dead? What if... What if you had one chance to use the secret art of resurrecting the dead. What if you had one shot, one opportunity? <laughs> yes, if you had the power to bring someone back to life one time and one time only, what would you do, $2 hero? Use the directional buttons to make your choice. I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice myself. I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice someone. I'd use it if it came at no cost. I wouldn't want it, let's... You know, I think this is kind of where I would be at. Um, You know... I think everything sort of happens for a reason. Also, I just realized that this storyteller is not like an old man. That top portion of his face is like an old man mask. That is unsettling. I see. Very interesting. Yes, yes, that is what I thought you would say. Hmm, what seems to be the matter? Ah, you want to know what this box has been sitting here is? It's quite the curious thing, isn't it? This is called a color television. The world I will be sending you to is full of devices such as this that do not exist in the age you are from. In this era, a color television can be found in nearly every household. That is not all. For example, if a person should wish to contact someone while they are out of their home, they use public telephones like this that can be found all over the city. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you imagine what life would be like in such a time? I'd be thrilled to have you continue this story, $2 hero. After all, that is why you came here, no? So let us begin. I've kept you waiting long enough. I present to you Paranorma Site, a bizarre tale surrounding the curse known as the Rite of Resurrection. A peculiar yarn ensnaring nine men and women in a fierce fight for their lives as it unravels. Some of the characters appearing within surely share your views on the Rite of Resurrection. I imagine those who have lost someone dear to them will feel, will feel particularly strongly about it, clinging to it as their last desperate hope. The first I shall introduce, a man named Shoujo Okii, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, is one of them. Okay. Oh, I wonder what it could be at such a time. Got some breaking news. Early this morning, the body of a drowned man was discovered at a park in Sumida City. Police have identified the body as Shoujo Okii, a 25-year-old man who worked at a company in the area. As signs of a struggle were found, the Sumida police suspect foul play and have launched an investigation. Oh, excuse me, please pay no mind to what you've just seen. Goodness, you very nearly saw something that would have spoiled the story. Just pretend you did not see that. Let us turn back time a smidge and start again from there. Do you understand? You saw nothing. You know nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. This story is a work of fiction. All locations, characters, organizations, legends, etc. that appear in this game have no relation to reality. What a bizarre way to open the game. And I'm kind of here for it. Shogo? Shogo, are you alright? Somebody named Yoko. Hey, can you hear me? Huh? Hey, that's not a proper answer. Earth to Shogo Okii. What do you think you're doing falling asleep here? You gave me quite the shock. Come on now, up with you. Up. Okay, and... 
There. How's that, all right? Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? I'm fine, I think. There's definitely nothing wrong with my humors, though my head's still a little fuzzy. Office worker, Shogoki. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Turn your head around a little bit, see if you can walk all right. When the game is in your control, use the right stick or swipe the screen with two fingers to look around. Try looking around your surroundings now. Oh. Well, this is cool. You know, in a lot of visual novels, you don't have camera control like this. Whoa. <laughs> good, good. You seem to be fine. What a relief. Do you remember anything? Like where we are, what we're doing? I, mean, I could probably make an assumption. Um. Oh no, you look so confused. You're messing with me, right? Stop it. You're scaring me. All right, let's just calm down. Take a good look around you, okay? Look around and select things you want to investigate. You can converse with people by selecting their faces. Okay. Hmm. Where are we? Oh, right. This is Sumida City, Tokyo. We're at Kinshibori Park near Kinshicho Station. Okay, <laughs> mess that up. Kinshicho Station. Yoko brought me here saying she needed my help with something important. It's just past midnight. That explains why there's nobody else around. Okay. All right. Okay, and we have a check mark to denote that we have investigated that particular thing. Cool. These telephone booths are all over town. The lights are always on so they can be used in an emergency. Very good. What else do we have to investigate here? Playground. That's an interesting looking playground. I bet it's crawling with kids during the daytime, but it's kind of peaceful here at night. So we can kind of like talk to Yoko and, and inspect Yoko. That's Yoko Fukunaga. Fukunaga? Good, at least I can remember that much. I first met her about a month ago. She's 23, works as a housekeeper, and is really into the occult. If I think harder, I can probably recall a little bit more about what's going on. We've only met a few times, but we've really hit it off. She's a lot of fun to be around. I have no idea how she feels, though. I get the sense she isn't thinking about me that way right now. But I've got a thing for bubbly girls who are into dark things like the occult. Oh gosh, I feel so seen by that image. Just the... <laughs> Yikes. Paranormal fanatic Yoko Fukunaga. I feel very seen by that statement. Same, Shogo. Same. <laughs> bubbly girls who are into the occult. Let me think. What can I remember? Okay, her name is Yoko Fukunaga. We met about a month ago. What's the deal with this park? It was around noon on one of my days off. I just finished running some errands in Kinshicho and was here taking a quick break. I was just looking around absent-mindedly. Oh, I'm looking around. I didn't even realize. When I noticed this girl loitering about, she was digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seemed to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. My curiosity got the better of me before long, and I struck up a conversation. Hey, are you looking for something? Hmm? Oh, sorry, I must look like a total weirdo. Um, yeah, I guess you could say I'm looking for something. If you want, I could give you a hand. Really? I mean, that'd be a huge help, but... But... Are you really just a good Samaritan, or are you after... You know, something else? Huh? 
I'm a good Samaritan. Oh, wow. My hero. People like you really do exist. I think I might cry. Okay. I guess I'll let you help me, but be warned. You might regret what you've gotten yourself into. No worries. What are you looking for, anyway? Did you lose a bracelet or something? Not exactly. I'm searching for one of the seven mysteries. Supposedly, this is the location of the Whispering Canal. The what? Now I've done it, I bet you think I'm some kind of lunatic. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Do you know anything about it? I figured everyone around here would have at least heard of it, but I guess not. Hanjo is what the southern part of Sumida is called. A long time ago, this part of Tokyo was split into two separate cities. The north part was Mukojima, and the south part was Hanjo. Huh. Uh, am, am I boring you? Well, I'm not a local or anything, I just work around here. Oh, then no wonder you didn't know. Well, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo is a legend dating all the way back to the Edo period. Really, it's that old. That's like, over 200 years ago. Oh, I've got your attention after all. I just assumed it was one of those fake stories made up to chase the occult, cra occult craze. <laughs> I don't blame you, a lot of the popular stories going around are pretty fishy. But the seven mysteries of Hanjo are different, because they're all true. They're true? That's what I said, they're the real deal. S so hold on, what does that mean? Are you telling me there's actually paranormal stuff at work in this park? Yep, pretty much. But there's gotta be more to it, after all I've done I still haven't found a thing. That was the first time I met Yoko Fukunaga. Okay. We exchanged contact information. We've talked on the phone a few times since. We've even met in person once or twice. But she never brought up the seven mysteries of Hanjo again. I figured she got bored of it. Until today, when all of a sudden she decided to resume her search. Huh? Wait a second. Where did Yoko go? Well, there she is. According to Yoko, the Whispering Canal, one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo, is around here somewhere. It's apparently the story that the expression, left at the canal, originally comes from. I think I left myself a note about it. I should check my files. Let's check my files, eh? The Whispering Canal? An enduring superstition, formerly known as Kinchibori, many fishermen once gathered on this section of the canal that ran through Hanjo. As their days came to a close and the fishermen gathered up their catches, a terrifying voice would rise up from the canal, whispering, Leave it behind, leave it behind. Those who ignored the voice found themselves unable to move and their previously full baskets of fish emptied. They would then be dragged into, well, we got a typo there, into He Canal. Uh, never to return. This strange phenomenon continued to occur and the people began to call this body of water the Whispering Canal. So we're looking for a body of water? Uh, am, I, am I reading that right? <laughs> or at least where a body of water once was? There she is. She's back to digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seems to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. No animal needs that much petting. Oh, no, disagree. We can agree to disagree there, Shoujo. Geez, she's still at it. Hmm. Okay. Wondering if maybe I need to recall something? Or can I... Yeah. Okay. So I should check my files. There's there's some weirdness going on here. I wonder what that's about. 
Hanjo became known as a hot spot for strange happenings during the Edo period. A number of these stories have survived to this day and become known as the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. While many of these were likely the result of people blaming things they didn't understand on spirits or monsters, the stories continue to be told as urban legends. Despite what the name would imply, there are actually more than ten of these strange tales. Their roots likely come from stories told by the city's common folk. The most famous of the stories is the Whispering Canal, which eventually became the basis for both an idiom and a well-known Rakugo story. Ah, okay. So we've got all these different... All these different entries on the seven mysteries. Hmm. Oh, weird. It's like... I'm mostly just wondering, like... Okay, there she is. She's coming back. I guess I, you just had to investigate her a couple times. Hey, what was that just now? Huh? Didn't you hear that? You're hearing things. No, I didn't hear anything. You sure you didn't just imagine it? Hmm, maybe I did. But your special talent, you should have been able to hear it. Pay closer attention for me, okay? My special talent? What are you talking about? Huh? I meant your spirit sense. You look like you can handle your liquor. Huh? I have no idea what drinking has to do with it, but I don't think so. Hmm. Well, you must. I mean, you can see me, right? Huh? Oh, snap. We got a ghost girl. Oh, snap. 1 a.m. It's gotten late. Really late, actually. It's already past 1 a.m. There's a chill in the air, but I guess that's normal for this time of year. Or so I keep telling myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny that you can, like, reselect. <laughs> yeah, even if it has, like, the same text, you can reselect. I don't know how she's so comfortable talking about spirits and the paranormal at this time of night. Either she's got guts or she's just used to it, unless... No, it can't be. I think it can be, my friend. Wait, wait, wait. You're kidding, right? About what? I mean, just now. Kind of sound like you were saying that only people with spirit sense can see you. Of course that was a joke, duh. You don't really think I'm some kind of evil spirit, do you? But yeah. I meant what I said about your spirit sense being strong. I bet you could down a whole gimlet in one gulp. Seriously. That's the real reason I asked you to help me with this Seven Mysteries of Hanjo business. Okay, let me just clarify something. Are you saying you can actually see paranormal stuff? Sure, I could handle a solid Moscow mule. Why are you measuring this in terms of cocktails? Not a believer, huh? Well, that's no matter. But you have to have seen some weird stuff over the years, right? Weird stuff? Yeah, like, things you could see, but could never understand. You can't be serious. I've seen ghost photos in magazines before, but are you telling me they really exist? You bet they do. You can only recognize them if you really believe in them, so be careful. So even with my skill, I won't be able to see them if I doubt that they exist? That's right, the spirit world is all about the mind and the soul. You won't be able to see a thing unless you're properly in tune. 
but sometimes people get caught up in the moment, thinking they might see something, and then they really do, because they believe they would. Is that how that works? Yep, just like drinking. You'll never know how much booze you can handle unless you're ready to town some shots. I'm still not sure I get the drinking thing. <laughs> you know, I realized how strange it was as the words left my mouth. Sheesh. Yeah, curious about the alcohol thing. Strange. Totally unrelated, but do you actually drink real alcohol, I mean? Whoa, it's like a whiplash. Didn't expect you to start making small talk. Well, our conversation was getting a bit dark. I figured a change of topic might lighten things up. Oh ho, I see. If you really want to know, I like to think I can handle a few drinks. But to tell you the truth, I've never actually had a Moscow Mule. Really now? <laughs> I just thought it sounded cool. I would like to try it though. Why don't we go for a drink sometime then? Oh, are you asking me out? No, you're just being a good Samaritan, right? No, that's not what I meant. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'd be up for that. But only if we find one of the seven mysteries. Alright, well, let's get to work. I just remembered. I actually did some research on the seven mysteries of Hanjo at the library. You did? What did you find? Well, I discovered a few interesting things. Oh, tell me everything. Although they're called the Seven Mysteries, the literature lists nine of them. Oh, I'm surprised you picked up on that. Nice researching. Some people think there could be up to 15. That's the thing about these old folk tales. Stuff gets added to them over the years. There's more extra stories than main ones. Yeah, but the Seven Mysteries rolls off the tongue way better than 9 or 15. If you say so. But it makes sense, don't you think? It's more likely to be passed on if it's easy to remember. Hmm, that's a good point. That is a good point. So, interestingly, it looks like, yeah, there will be a, a check mark if you've sort of gone down all of the narrative paths, it looks like. So I read some of the stories, and none of them were, well, scary. I thought these were supposed to be ghost stories. That's true, they're more like a collection of superstitions, really. But there are some pretty disturbing ones in the mix. Yeah, like the one that's supposed to take place here, the Whispering Canal. People who fished in this canal would hear a voice call out saying, Leave it. They had to abandon their catch or the canal would take it. Right, right. Is that what you're expecting to find here in this park? Um, not quite. We're talking about a folk tale from hundreds of years ago. After centuries of the telephone game, who knows if it's anything like the original story? So, basically, do you think the true story of the Whispering Canal might be completely different from what we know? Exactly, I'm sure it is. I mean, weren't you curious? About what? People from around here have that expression left at the canal, right? Meaning to abandon someone. This story is where it comes from. Except the story being told today is about fish. There's nothing in it about leaving people behind. Now that you mention it, that's true. So you're saying the original story maybe did involve someone being abandoned? That's what I'm trying to find out. Ah, gotcha. Okay, let's ask about spirit sense. If you can believe that, there might be hope for you yet. You can't be serious. Oh, was that it? Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, were we talking about the rite of resurrection? Oh, your memory is as strong as your tolerance. I'm gonna start calling you Martini Man Shogo. I'm really climbing up the drinks menu, huh? So you know about it, huh? The rite of resurrection? A magazine ran a feature on it recently that got practically everyone talking about it. Really, maybe that's where I heard about it. Still, I don't know, it seems a little too far-fetched to be true. So, the Rite of Resurrection. It's the forbidden art of bringing the dead back to life, concocted by a famous On- was that? Onmyoji? From an ancient age. 
Rumor has it an old manuscript containing actual concrete details about the rite was recently discovered. This rumor comes from a presentation given by local historian Hideki Araishi at an academic conference. You sure know a lot about this stuff. That's because I'm secretly a huge occult buff. I kind of got that. Yeah, huge secret, right? Oh. But if a researcher spoke about it in an academic conference, it must have some basis in fact. Exactly, that's why I believe the rite of resurrection is real. Now I'm starting to believe it too. Good. The pursuit of the unknown starts with belief. I got that from Professor Aishi himself. Hmm. Wait, hang on. I've got another question. Hmm? You mentioned the Rite of Resurrection. Are you looking for that too? Does it have something to do with the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo? Oh, you're sharp. I could cut my finger on you. To tell the truth, it's actually the other way around. What do you mean? Hmm, well, I started off searching for the Rite of Resurrection, but along the way I realized that I needed to investigate the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo first. I see, so then... Hmm... If you're looking into a way to bring someone back from the dead, does that mean you've got someone you want to bring back? Uh, you know what, forget it. It just came to mind so I thought I'd ask. I, I didn't mean to pry, sorry. No, it's fine. I figure I'd need to tell you at some point. It's Ogopogo. Ogopogo? Yeah. I want to bring Ogopogo back to life. He died in an accident about a month ago. Ogopogo died? Oh, right. Ogopogo was my dog. I had him for eight years. Ah, okay. Your dog. Gotcha. You spent a long time together. Losing him must have been really hard for you. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not sure if the right even works on dogs. But as soon as I found out about it, I knew I had to give it a try. I don't think I could forgive myself if I just let the opportunity pass by. Definitely. Now I understand why you feel so strongly about it. Thanks for telling me. I know this must be hard to talk about. Mm, but you know what? All that led me meeting you. So at least something good came out of it. Though that doesn't mean I'll stop looking, obviously. Yoko. I'll do everything I can to help you. Yay, I'm so glad to hear that. Let's keep up the hard work then, yeah? So, about the connection between this rite and the seven mysteries. Putting together everything we've talked about, my guess is that the original stories behind the seven mysteries, the true stories, are the key to finding the rite of resurrection. And that's why you're here searching for one of them. Do I have that right? Wow, 10 out of 10. You're proving to be quite the capable assistant. Wait, since when was I your assistant? Anyway, this is all just hearsay, but... Some say that what led to the Seven Mysteries coming to be was the Rite of Resurrection itself. Huh? Don't the stories come from the Edo period? I thought the Rite of Resurrection was supposed to be way older than that. Right, it seems that an Onimoji from the uh, Edo period rediscovered the ancient art. That old manuscript I mentioned with all the details on how to use the rite, apparently it was written in the Edo period. Oh, right, I never told you its name. The manuscript is called The Record of Fates. Whoa, what a name. And it speculates that the secret of the rite is hidden within the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. So now, the Seven Mysteries are the hot new trend. Among who? You know, this whole thing's starting to sound pretty questionable. Come on, remember what I said about the pursuit of the unknown? Starts with belief. Right. Whoa! Oh snap. What the hell? Feels like the air just changed. Oh, weird. Okay. Think. Oh god, she's pointing. Something's got Yoko really rattled. I feel eyes on my back. I can't move. 
Is there something behind me? Oh god. Yoko, are you okay? Oh man. Hey, what's wrong? Stay with me. No, this can't be. Oh god. This is creepy because the game is... Wow, I gotta say, I, I don't know that I've ever quite played a game that has done this. Because this is putting the hands in the power of the player. I know that there is something terrible behind me, but I have to turn around and look at it myself. Oh god. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't see it. Where are you? Oh god. But I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Push. What's going on? Did something happen? Yoko? What is going on? Oh god. Huh? Quick, play running up that hill. Oh, what is it? Why is this happening? Oh, God. Poor Yoko, man. Yoko, answer me, Yoko. No way, it can't be, why? Oh man. Oh God. What the hell just happened? No, damn it, I've got bigger problems. Oh man. Oh God, she's not breathing. She's cold, and, and I don't feel a pulse. This can't be happening. Okay, okay, okay. An ambulance. Right, I, I've got to call an ambulance. I need a phone. Well, there's a telephone right over here. I called it in. The ambulance shouldn't be long. But is it going to make a difference? Her body's gone stiff and her skin is cold and I don't think she's breathing. She looks more like a mannequin than a person now. I don't think there's any coming back from that. I don't get it. Just a few minutes ago, we were chatting away without a care in the world. Yoko. How did this happen? How come someone so bright and bubbly just suddenly dropped dead? Resurrect her. Huh? Oh, that's right. If that rite of resurrection she was talking about really does exist, there might be a way to bring her back. If someone can just drop dead out of nowhere, like, like they were cursed, then why shouldn't there be a way to bring them back to life? Yoko believed in it, so if I believe in her, it seems completely possible. Maybe... Just maybe, I can still save her. Even if I've got to deal with spirit senses and curses and whatever, I've got to try. Wait for me, Yoko. I promise, I'll use the rite of resurrection to bring you back. Right before she died, I felt a strange presence a few times. And it seemed like she saw something. Something that shook her to the bone. There's definitely something strange going on, and maybe it's still here. What could she have seen? She mentioned that the Rite of Resurrection and Seven Mysteries were connected. So maybe, whatever it was she saw, had something to do with that Whispering Canal. Whoa. Damn it, that presence again. It must be around here somewhere, but where? 
cold night air feels like it's pressing down on me. Just standing here makes me want to scream, but I've got bigger problems right now. Called an ambulance already. It should be here soon. Oh, of course. I don't know how it took me so long to realize. This has to be some weird prank she's playing. Any second now, she's gonna open her eyes, get up, and have a good laugh at how scared I was. Right, Yoko? You can give it up now. Boy, did I fall for that one. You really got me good. Wait, no, I've got it. You really were some sort of spirit all along. There's no way you're really dead. Right? I'm not even fooling myself anymore. There's no going back. Only forward. Hmm. Let's think. Hmm. I knew the risks. Sort of feel like she was over here, like petting these animals quite a lot. Hmm. Oh. Did Yoko drop this? I didn't notice it till now, but there's a small wooden sculpture by her side. It's three or four centimeters tall. It looks like it could be a keychain, but from how rotted it is, it's way too old for that. Despite how tiny it is, I feel an almost palpable malice radiating from it. What the hell is this thing? Curse stone acquired. The Whispering Canal. Well then. Oh, well, there she is again. What the? Hmm. Are these the Whispering Canal's memories? Such deep sorrow, a resentful memory is flowing into my mind. Oh. Leave me behind, drop dead. You've acquired the power of the Curse Stone, the Whispering Canal. You can use it to kill those who walk away from you. Press the Use Curse button to kill your target as they attempt to depart. Whoa. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now. Kill. Can you hear it, Curse Bearer? You who so strongly desires the right? Kill them. Should you seek life's restoration? Take your curse in hand. Reap lives by the score. And claim their soul dregs for your own. Collect enough to sate this vessel, and by their sacrifice claim the gift of resurrection. Or better yet, slay your fellow curse bearers, for theirs are the equal of droves of lesser souls. Now, go forth and kill. the hell was that? It was like the curse's memories flowed directly into my mind. In an instant, I understood everything. When I picked up this curse stone, the Whispering Canal must have cursed me. I also heard a strange voice. It told me that if I want the right, I have to kill a bunch of people with this curse stone and collect their souls. I guess it's good to know that the right really exists, but this thing wants me to kill people to get it? Screw that! Putting my own life on the line is one thing. Murdering other people is another thing entirely. Not just one person either. Scores, it said. So this is the curse of the Whispering Canal, huh? 
a curse that traps the soul of anyone who tries to walk away from me. But if I use it and collect enough souls, then I'll be able to bring Yoko back. There is something about other curse bears being worth more soul dregs. Jeez. I'm really at a loss here. Yeah, well, you just met Yoko, all right? You barely know her. Let's be real. Oh, hello. <laughs> Calling him out. Hey, who's there? He gone. Oh, no, he's coming closer. Oh my, how unexpected. It was your curse that killed that poor woman, I take it. What? Cat got your tongue, Mr. Oki. Huh? Well then. A tall, humorless looking man. He doesn't look familiar to me. He's acting like he knows me though. Have we met somewhere before? Who are you and how do you know my name? Do you mean to say you don't recognize me? This comes as a bit of a shock, I must say. Look a little harder and I dare say it will jog your memory. It's with this guy. Hmm. Look a little harder. I don't know what he means by that. Think maybe? Mmm. Yeah, he might be one of the curse bearers. Well, I don't want to kill him. I don't even know him. I still don't have a clue who you are. How do you know me? Have we met? Dear me, it is always humbling to find that one is not as well known as one believes. Perhaps my name will help you remember. I am Takumi... Was that Takumi Yumioka? Takumi Yumioka? Does that ring any bells? I think I've heard that name somewhere before, maybe. So you do not even know my name. How disappointing. Disappointing, but fortuitous. Well then, Mr. Oki, allow me to make you a proposition. You have a curse stone in your possession. I would like you to give it to me. How do you know? Well, I saw the whole thing. That doesn't explain how you know what a curse stone is. Even I barely have a handle on it. You know about the seven mysteries of Hanjo and their curses and all that, don't you? But of course, those curse stones, they're terribly dangerous things, capable of killing without a trace so long as their conditions are met. I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah. Imagine what might happen if one fell into the wrong hands. They'd be safer in mine, don't you agree? Although it seems I arrived too late to stop you from killing that poor woman. What? That wasn't me. I'm willing to overlook your indiscretion, but only if you give me your curse. No way in hell. For all I know, the wrong hands are yours. Very well. I'd hope to settle this. <laughs> I'd hope to settle this amicably, but you leave me no choice. This Takumi guy must have a cursed stone of his own. No. If he if he did, why wouldn't a why wouldn't he have killed me already? And why would he want mine? Right, exactly. I do I do feel like how can I get him to leave me behind? 
Yeah, I definitely want to learn more about the other curse bearers, I think. A topic that'll keep him talking... himself? <laughs> Before I give you my curse stone, I want to know who you are. I need to know if I can trust you. Reasonable enough concern. Very well. I'm an associate of the great sorcerer Suigen Gamyoto. Interesting. Indeed, you must have heard of him. I believe he was recently featured in a certain magazine. Your unfortunate companion there came seeking his counsel not a few days ago. It was from her that I learned your name. I thought she would have mentioned me to you, but it seems she was that was presumptuous of me. And when did this happen? Why, just two or three days ago. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not buying that. He knows I don't know who he is, so he's just trying to feed me a story. I've only known Yoko for a month, but she never mentioned going to see some mystic. Although it is Yoko we're talking about here, so it's hard to say for sure. I hope that's enough to convince you that my hands are more than trustworthy. No. How do I know it wasn't you who killed Yoko with your curse? Mr. Oki, if you're hoping to trick me into revealing whether I possess a curse stone, I assure you, you cannot. It is your curse that was responsible, Mr. Oki, no matter what you might tell yourself. That doesn't make sense. I only found this after Yoko died. Oh? Don't play dumb. I know you're the one who did this. Whether you choose to believe me is your prerogative, but you are mistaken. But you should know that multiple curses awakened at once at the stroke of midnight. There are many other curses in Hanjo and many other curse bearers. It is not premature of you to assume that... I am the one responsible? Wait, so you're saying that at midnight a bunch of people became curse bearers? There's no point in continuing this conversation. For all I know, you could be telling me anything. Very true. Something more to talk about with Yoko, though. Why are you so convinced it was my curse that killed Yoko? Why it is simply that... Hmm? I do believe I just saw your companion move. She what? He wants me to turn around. I don't like that. What would you do with that information? Your intentions are nothing untoward, I hope. It is in the hearts of the selfish and insipid of those who would be the most tempted by the rite of resurrection that the curses take root. And a curse's resentful memories impart a powerful urge to kill, as I am certain you are aware. You're a victim of circumstance, Mr. Oki, but your situation is exceedingly dangerous. You must relinquish your curse stone for your own benefit before it's too late. Too late? It's already too late. There's no going back. All I can do is keep pressing forward. If you're going to stand in my way, then I'll have to stop you. Am I to take that as a threat, Mr. Oki? I would encourage you to exercise more discretion before you fall foul of a curse. He wants me to turn around, and I don't like it. What do you want with my curse stone, anyway? I intend to seal it away in a secure location so it may never be used again. I'm certain that you, too, would rather be free of this burden power to kill without fear of consequences in itself a curse. There are many ne'er-do-wells in this world who could not resist the urge to use it. All the more so if promised the chance to resurrect the dead. You'll seal it away. How? I'll put it in the care of a sorcerer who is well-versed in supernatural matters. If I've gained your trust, I must ask you to hand me your curse stone. You definitely haven't. What are you doing? Should you not check on her? Oh, God. Okay, I guess I got no choice. Y Yoko? Wait, she doesn't look any different. Yeah, saw that coming. No. Damn it all. Yeah, saw that coming.
My, my, $2 hero, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. This is mere conjecture on my part, but perhaps you ought to be more careful about turning your back on unscrupulous invi- I know! I, there was- You may make as many attempts as you please from before your unfortunate mishap. I mean, yeah, I didn't want to. Just remember, whatever you do, do not turn around. I knew it was a bad idea. I called it. Hmm, maybe if I focus, I can recall something useful. Hmm. Oh, he knows me from work? I've never actually met him, so it totally slipped my mind. Interesting. Takumi is the secretary to the chairwoman of Hihaku Soaps, a chemicals company headquartered in Sumida City. Worships the company chairwoman, demonstrates his unwavering loyalty through his swift and exact execution of every task given to him. Just as Natsue Yamamori continues to exert tremendous influence over the company since her retirement from the presidency, so too does Takumi continue to support her behind the scenes. Okay. Yep. Makes sense that he knows me. <laughs> I don't know if having figured that out helps me much right now. Yeah, you're probably right. He works at Hiyaku Soaps just like me. He's a secretary of the chairwoman. No wonder I didn't recognize him. He's way above us lowly peons. I've only ever seen him in the company bulletins. But he knew who I was. Could he have memorized the names and faces of everyone in the company? Probably. Let's see what happens. Sugen Gamyoto, my ass. I know who you are. You work at Hihaku Soaps, just like me. You're the chairwoman's secretary. Well, that took you long enough. Your lack of company loyalty is frankly astounding. Allow me to reiterate my request then, not as a stranger, but as your superior. Hey, we're not at the office. You don't get to push me around like that. Why is our chairwoman's secretary even lo out looking for cursed stones anyway? I refrain from revealing myself precisely to avoid such questions, but I suppose needs must. Since the dawn of the Showa era, the land of Hanjo has nurtured our company's growth and vice versa. It is our duty to ensure that curses do not take root in this land as we know our we know as our home. I'm not sure I buy that. Like many things, it is not a matter that concerns the rank and file. The chairwoman has no desire to spread fear through our beloved company's birthplace. Now if that is all, I must insist that you hand me your curse stone. Hmm, I would convince him to do that. Scenario one, he does what he came here to do. Scenario two, he suddenly needs to be somewhere else. Hmm. I know how I can convince him to leave. Oh, crap, I totally forgot. What is it? Mm, I did call an ambulance. I called an ambulance. Should be coming any minute now. An ambulance? Have you lost your mind? They'll arrive to find you standing next to a corpse alone in the dead of night. No doubt they'll hand you over to the police who will have some questions for you. Probably, but I'm sticking with Yoko. Unless you want to join me in an interrogation room, you'd better get out of here. Telling the truth, I see. They're getting closer by the second. I cannot afford to be waylaid at this juncture. I fear I must take my leave. I don't think I want to kill him, though. Sooner or later, I'll return for your curse stone. I only hope you do not abuse it in the meantime. Well then, I bid you good evening. Gosh, do I kill him? Shogooki, you dare! I didn't press the button! I swear I didn't press the button, y'all.
he's dead. He's really dead. So this is what a curse stone can do. I didn't press the button. Has gained 1% soul dregs. Oh my gosh. Wow. I left the park immediately. I felt bad for leaving Yoko, but I couldn't stay there. The emergency medical services will probably take care of her body. Takumi's too. This will be all over the news tomorrow. But until then, at least I know she'll be in a safe place. Alright. I have to find my next sacrifice quickly. I've got no time to waste. I need to find the other curse bearers and collect their souls. Killing Takumi barely got me any soul dregs. I guess he mustn't have been a curse bearer after all. It's not enough. The soul of a non curse bearer amounts to little more than leftover breadcrumbs. I have to think of places where the other curse bearers of the Seven Mysteries would be. The curses were activated around midnight. The others are bound to be active still. I should check to see if there are any other places with connections to the mysteries nearby. At the very least, another curse bearer might be thinking the same as me, meaning I could run into them. Let's see. Which of the Seven Mysteries are closest? I'm in the Kinshicho uh, area right now. The Haunting Clappers are on the other side of Oyoko River, just over Shumoko Bridge. The Foot Washing Mansion and the Ever Burning Lantern are around South Warigisui Street, past the train tracks. And further along Oyoko River, I'll find the Beckoning Light, a Hoonji Bridge. Those three places are the closest. I guess I should start there. Okay. I think this is where we're going to call it for this video. I don't want to spoil too much, and I think we've gotten a really good sense of what this game is about. Um, again, sort of a dark, interesting mystery plot from Square Enix. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really into it. There's a lot going on here. Um, I'm, I'm very interested to see where this goes. This is the kind of, like... But if you like a good mystery, if you're the kind of person who likes to, you know, sort of lose yourself in, like, a... You know, like, like a good book or something. A good visual novel, you know, I guess. Um, I think this will be right up your alley. Um, again, pretty dark subject matter, but if you made it this far, then you already know that. Uh, it's available now on the Nintendo Switch. There's a purchase link in the video description for you to check out. And if you want to hear more about Paranorma Site, tune in to All In and Nintendo Podcast, our weekly Nintendo podcast that we do. There are always links to that in the video description. If you want to see more of this game, maybe you want me to stream it or something like that, let me know in the comments below. And for more video content just like this, you're already in the right place. All in right here on YouTube. So be sure to like and subscribe. If you want more stuff like this, I'm always putting up new Nintendo videos. This has been Paranorma Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Very, very cool game. Looking forward to seeing where this story goes. Uh, but until the next video, guys, I love you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.